I'm going to try and divide this up into a few pieces, okay? First, just because I know probably you don't, a lot of you don't remember, what is a rational function apart from the example? In maths, rational doesn't mean sensible, uh, it means to do with ratios, right? Okay? So essentially, a rational function is just a function which has a, a fraction in it that you can't resolve, that you can't get rid of, that you can't simplify out, okay? So we're going to look at a whole bunch of examples. Um, I've got um, a four-step process to graph any rational function, okay? And um, <laughs> I try and make corny acronyms for all my things, okay? So we're going to get to the corny acronym soon. But first I thought I'd tell you what a couple of the harder parts of the acronym are about, and then we'll put it all together, okay? So the first subheading you should make is asymptotes. Okay? You know what asymptotes and asymptotic behavior is? So, we want to work out how do we find where the asymptotes of a rational function are. Because you need to know where they are so you can know what your graph looks like, okay? So, there are three kinds of um, asymptote, right? Three kinds. Um, types. And you may like to draw yourself here um, a little table, okay? What are the three kinds? Um, you've got vertical ones, right? Vertical. Um, and then you've got hmm, horizontal ones. Okay. And then you've got the weirdo ones, which are really a pain, oblique ones. Okay. So going up, down, going across, and then the ones which offer an angle. Okay. Or well, an, an angle. Right. Now you can actually tell. Before you even start really working with a rational function, immediately which ones uh, uh, a graph is going to have. Okay, so let's think about this. Um, how can you tell? Well, a vertical asymptote. What does a vertical asymptote come from? Okay, let's think about some examples. Things like this: y equals one over x. Okay, one over x. Where's the vertical asymptote? It's at x equals zero. Now, if I just change this a little bit. What effect does that have on the vertical asymptote? Yeah. It, it moves it over. Now the vertical asymptote is x equals 1. Okay. How do I get the vertical asymptote? What if I made it something like, say, uh, x squared minus 1? Hmm. The simple way of working out. Um, number one, do you have a vertical asymptote? Because they don't all have vertical um, Is there a vertical asymptote? Is Can the denominator... Uh, sorry, test... Can the denominator equal zero? Okay. Can the denominator equal zero? Okay. So for instance, if I change this, right? Let's make it x squared plus one. x squared plus one. Look at the denominator. x squared plus one. Can it equal to zero? Can it equal to zero? It can't, right? Because you can't find any real values that satisfy that equation. So y equals 1 on x squared plus 1 has no vertical asymptotes, even though it's a rational function. Okay? All right. So keep that in your mind. What you're looking at, think about horizontal and oblique asymptotes. Okay? The, I'm actually going to lump these together. Okay? Because a vertical asymptote means it's a question of domain. Right? Okay? Because at a vertical asymptote, the graph uh, cannot exist. When you put such a value in, it breaks the function because you're dividing by zero. Okay? Horizontal and oblique asymptotes are very, very different. They're not about domain. They tell you what happens at the far ends of the graph. Okay? The far ends of the graph. Another way of saying that is the extremities. Right? Extremities. That looks about right. So at positive and negative infinity. Okay? So coming back to that first one, y equals 1 over x. Right? <clears throat> What is the, um, well, it's got, a, it's got a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, right? Now, when you look at this graph very quickly, right? It's rough, okay? That y and that asymptote y equals zero doesn't tell you anything about what the graph's doing in the middle. The graph ignores the asymptote in the middle, okay? It's like running off over here and down there, okay? And it's the same with oblique asymptotes, okay? So that's why sometimes we're going to do some graphs where you've got, say, an asymptote like that, and the graph will cross it. 
like that. Okay? You thought, but wait, asymptotes, you can't cross asymptotes. You can't cross vertical asymptotes because they can't exist there. Right? Horizontal oblique asymptotes, you can cross them all the time. You can make, a you can make up a function that will cross the asymptote an infinite number of times because it just tells you about the ends, not about the middle. How do you know if it's got a horizontal or an oblique asymptote? Okay? For instance, I can tell you right now, without doing any work, um, that that will have a horizontal asymptote and not an oblique asymptote. How can I tell? Um, I can say that this will still have a horizontal asymptote, but this will have an oblique one. How do I know? I'm just playing with numbers, right? Yeah, just. Ah, okay, so degree. This is exactly the right word. Um, degree. What does degree mean? When you have a polynomial, like say 1 minus x cubed, degree means what's the highest power you can get to. Okay, so this 1 minus x cubed here, right? I can add on all these other weird things over on the end, um, whatever. Okay, the highest power is still 3. So the degree of the numerator here is 3. Okay, the degree of the denominator is 2. Now, I'm going to give you um, the test for whether something is horizontal or oblique. Okay? Think about the degree of the numerator and compare it to the denominator. Okay? So I'm going to call that degree of the numerator okay? uh, and the degree of the denominator. Okay. What's a horizontal asymptote mean? Uh, it means you're going towards one concrete value. Okay? So, if these two degrees are equal, okay, if they're equal, um, so I've got, let's, let's go back here, say x squared minus 1 and x squared plus 1. Remember what we were talking about? It's about the ends. What happens when there are really huge numbers involved, okay? So I've got like x equals a million or x equals minus a million. See this minus 1 and this plus 1. Or anyone else that's in the vicinity, to be honest, okay? When you're at big values like plus or minus a million, these guys become insignificant, okay? Because this guy takes over. The degree takes over. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, seeing as the degrees are equal, these two things, though they look very different, at the infinities, they approach the same thing. They both approach a million squared or a billion squared over a million squared or a billion squared, okay? So what will these things approach? Well, in that case, it would be one. Does that make sense? Because they're approaching the same thing. What if I change it? What if I stuck a 2 at the front of that 2x squared? What effect would that have? Well, this is approaching uh, a million squared times 2, and this is approaching a million squared. Right? That's what it's getting to at the ends. Right? So the whole thing will just be towards 2. Does that make sense? So if the degrees are equal, you will get a horizontal asymptote. Okay? But hold on a second. The very first example I gave you has a horizontal asymptote, but the degrees are not equal. What's going on? Um, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Okay? Now, why does this give us a horizontal asymptote? It actually gives us a special horizontal asymptote. What if I said, let's make it you know, that and then change this? When the degrees are different, okay, so um, this is sort of a subset of horizontal, okay, when the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, what happens? What does 1 over x approach? Approaches 0. This also approaches 0. And so does this. And so does this. They all approach 0. How do I know? How do you know? Low murmurs, okay, I'm not sure. Remember, I keep on emphasizing, it's about the extremities, right? So what happens when you put in a million, okay? This thing's getting big, it's getting big fast, right? But this one's always going to get big faster, okay? So it's a large number over an incomprehensibly larger number, right? So I don't care how big this is, this guy's just going to tackle to the ground, get him into a headlock, and then, you know, um, make him making a sandwich or something. So, you know, you get the idea. <laughs> this thing, the, the numerator, is always going to get beaten by the denominator. 
So when the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, you still get a horizontal asymptote, but you get a particular one. Namely, you get x equals 0. Okay? Uh, sorry, yeah, y equals 0. Thank you. It's always y equals something. Okay. So, um, these are both horizontal, right? What would you get here? You get y equals some kind of constant, like we looked at 1 or 2 or 3 or minus 50. Okay? Alright, you guys are smart. You guys are good with patterns. I looked at the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. What do you think is going to go down here? When the degree of the numerator is bigger. Okay. So let's clean up a bit of our mess here. <coughs> if we um, go with x cubed over 1 minus x squared. Okay. As I go off to the infinities, okay, this number is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it will be much bigger than this, however big it is. Okay? So therefore, it's increasing. It's not going towards one number. I can put more numbers in and it will keep on increasing forever. Okay? So that's why okay, you're going to get graphs that do that. See, they're just going to keep on getting bigger. They're like, I'm not going to approach a value like that. I'm just going to keep on, keep on going. Okay? So this is how you can tell. Now, that's how you know which kind of asymptote you've got. But how do you work out what the asymptote is? Okay. I sort of already showed you with the vertical one. You make the denominator equal zero, and that'll spit out the equations of any um, vertical asymptotes you've got. For the horizontal ones, right? If the degrees of the numerator is less, you don't have to do any work. You just say it's zero. Okay. If the degrees are equal, what do you look for? The, the coefficient, specifically the leading coefficient. Um, y equals. 2x squared plus 100, right? What's that going to approach? You ignore all the other ones except for the ones with the degree. That's going to be 3 times a million squared. That'll be 2 times a million squared. It'll be 3 over 2. Does that make sense? Okay. So you don't have to do that much work. You can just see it on there. So that's how you get that. Let's how you get that. Hmm. Oblique asymptotes. How do you find what the oblique asymptote is? You have to divide. You've got no other choice. Um, which is... Painful, I admit, um, but hopefully if people have been um, thinking carefully for you, the equations won't be too bad. So let's just do a quick example. x squared minus, I'll put another value in there, plus 2, all over x minus plus 3. Alright, so I know there's an oblique asymptote, because degree is 2 and 1. Okay. So just to refresh you, in case you don't remember how to long divide, you stick your divisor up there, and you stick your, I honestly can't remember what this is called. Dividend? No. Dividends, yes. <laughs> Quotient's up here. So this one, yeah, okay, anyway. And then what do you do? You treat it just like long division for numbers. So you say, how many times does x go into x squared? Answer? X times. Then you multiply back. Okay. Then uh, you subtract, right? So minus x, minus 3x is? Minus 4x, okay? Then you do it all over again. Minus 4. Okay, now, usually you keep on going, okay? Because you want to find out what the remainder is, okay? However, because all we're trying to do is find an asymptote, right? This is actually far enough. Because watch this, right? What I'm saying is x squared minus x plus 2 is equal to x plus 3, x minus 4, and some remainder. But, have a look at what I'm actually looking for here, the graph, right? It's this over x plus 3, which is this over x plus 3 and this over x plus 3. Don't forget this is a constant number, like 2 or 50. Okay. Cancel, cancel. x minus 4 plus a remainder. Now, what are horizontal and oblique asymptotes about? I keep on asking you this. They're about extremities, okay? So you put in huge numbers for x. What's going to happen to this guy? You'll, you'll vanish, okay? And there's your oblique asymptote. Okay. So we hate long division, but at least we don't have to do all of it to find out what the actual asymptote is. Okay. All right. That's asymptotes. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions about any of those parts?